My name is Daniel Burson. I'm the artistic director of the festival, and it's such a pleasure to welcome all of you to our show this evening uh, for these five world premiere plays by Maine writers. I have uh, a few announcements to make. Uh, I'd like to thank some of the foundations and supporters who have helped make this year's Maine Playwrights Festival possible. The 2023 festival is supported by the Onion Foundation, the Margaret Burnham Charitable Trust, Coffee by Design, Bath Savings Bank, Three of Strong Spirits, Co-Work Hers, and Express Copy. If you'd all join me in a warm round of applause. <laughs> We'd also like to thank Amsel Ponty, the host of WCLZ's Music from 207, who curated our pre-show and intermission playlists, which are all uh, music by main artists, by the way, which I think is super cool. Um, and our 2023 playwright in residence, Jewel Selbo, whose new play, Souls on Ice, will be having a one-night-only reading right here in this space next Tuesday, April 11th. It is a very funny play uh, about a group of people who all have various forms of extrasensory perception, um, and it's a farce. So, I mean, I should say no more. Uh, come on, check it out next Tuesday evening, 7 o'clock, right here in this space. Um, so, uh, a few other quick things to cover uh, before we start the plays. Uh, first of all, our board of directors, a uh, wonderful group of people, none of whom are here tonight, uh, are looking for uh, new members uh, to join us in the work that we do, both for the Maine Players Festival and also for our education programs throughout the year. If anyone might be interested in thinking about joining our board, there's more information on the inside front cover of our program. They're a super great and supportive group of people, uh, and if you want to support new theater here in Portland, I encourage you to consider it. Uh, secondly, I want to give a huge thank you to all of the playwrights who submitted work for this year's festival. Uh, being a playwright is hard, often very lonely, um, and you don't get produced very often, and there are not a lot of opportunities out there. We're super proud to be one of them, but I want to say that we are really here for all the playwrights of Maine, and whether you're a person who got uh, selected and is one of our featured writers being performed tonight, or whether you just got one of our really, really very nice no thank you emails um, in your mailbox, uh, you deserve to be honored, you deserve to be like celebrated. Well, we're here to celebrate Maine writers. So I'd like to ask everybody who submitted a play to the festival this year who is in the audience tonight, please stand up, and we're going to have a huge round of applause for the playwrights of Maine. Everybody ready? Here we go. Get on up, y'all. for being here tonight. Um, also, if you enjoy the show tonight, tell your friends, tell people you know, your coworkers. <laughs> Word of mouth is like the very, very best marketing that we have. We've got four more shows next weekend, and I would love to see all of them with this number of people in the audience. That would be amazing. So uh, help us spread the word. Thank you so much, and have a great time tonight. Sweetheart, you're only new at something until you've tried it, and then you'll be an expert. Okay, so a couple of ground rules. As you're making connections, be sure to listen. Don't feel like you have to do all the talking. Uh, be open to a real connection, but don't expect it. Just let it be what it will be. And three, don't give out your contact information. Names are fine, but pass that to no go. Don't want anyone getting weird on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds simple enough. Oh, one more thing. Once everyone's situated, I will ring this little bell. And that means we've started. I'll ring it twice when we have two minutes left and three times when it's time to move on. Okay? Sure. Sounds great. Thanks. Just sit tight until then. It'll only be a few minutes. Ciao! Ha, ha, ha. 
Hey, Jamie. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm just not. I'm just not sure about it. You no, know? I mean, I'd say I'd try anything once. I just didn't mean. Okay. Yes, I'm sure this is just my anxiety. <laughs> I was. I am. I. <sighs> okay. Fine. You're right. You're right. I'm. I'm just. In my head. Yeah, yeah, some handsome man to sweep me off my feet. To uh, sweep me off your feet, huh? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, starting. Um, I don't know. <laughs> that uh, sounds like a tall order. Oh man, this is. Sorry, not how I imagined this starting. I was just... Um, nervous? Don't worry about it. First time? Actually, yeah. Are you... Do you do this often? I have been to a few of these events, but never really saw anything that caught my eye. I'm Caleb. Uh... <laughs> sorry. I'm, uh... Uh... Try not to be aware about this. I just... I've been trying to get out there more and try not to force it, and, um... I mean, it's been... Years, sure, the pandemic put a damper on. But anyway, finally, my friend Jamie suggested coming to one of these. So I'm here. Nice to meet you. What's your name, handsome? Oh, uh, Ashley. Sorry, did I forget to. Ashley. Yeah, so, uh, well, we are supposed to get to know each other. So, um,. No. Um, <laughs> um, are you more of a people person or a homebody? Uh, I guess a uh, people person, it, which has been difficult for the last little while, but um, I'm trying to get out there again. Uh, you? Oh, probably should have thought about these. <laughs> I guess in my heart of hearts I'm more of a homebody, but I like to go out if I have a person or some friends I can cling to, you know? I get that. Um, whiskey or beer? <laughs> I don't drink anymore. Uh, no, don't worry about it. Uh, when I did, I, I really liked a cheap whiskey on the rocks. I'm definitely more of a whiskey man myself. Well, we... Did that. <laughs> Do you have any siblings? Uh, no, I was an only child. You? My sister and I were raised by my mom, Genevieve. She single-handedly put us through college. Why am I telling you that? Um, <laughs> uh, are you more of a mountain person or a beach person? Uh, huh. I can't say anyone's ever asked me that before. I guess, um, I, I guess beach. I, I like, you know, imagining um, warm sand between my toes. Uh, you're walking the beach at, at sunset. There's, there's something you know, really meditative about that. What about you? This is maybe going to sound strange, but what I really love about the ocean is being reminded of how big it is. Like, it's just so big, <laughs> bigger than cities or mountains or continents. And like, when I look at the ocean, I get reminded that I am small and insignificant. <laughs> not in like a morose sort of way, but in like a my problems are not existential kind of way. Because like, look at how freaking big and unknowable the ocean is, you know? Yeah, that is exactly it. I mean, no one's ever put it like that for me before, but huh. yeah. Um. <laughs> How would your best friend describe you? Wait, do you have a best friend? No, never mind. Um, <laughs> what is your dream job? Dream job? Uh, what would you consider to be your best attribute? Uh, look, what if I uh, just go off script for a bit here? You know? Then. Oh, I, uh, uh, sure, uh, why not? <laughs> I <laughs> feel like it's best to get everything out in the open. Why don't you uh, tell me a little bit about you, and where you're from, what you're looking for, then we can get down to a little more down to brass tacks, right? Sure. Um, 
Well, as I said, um, I'm kind of a homebody. Love a game of Catan if you're into that sort of thing. But, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I've been trying to put myself out there more. And um, recently, well, if we're putting everything onto the table, uh, recently I've been in a bit of a funk ever since... We'll get into that later. But I was thinking to myself, I said, Ashley, if you let this hold you down, it'll hold you down for the rest of your life. And just because Jeff isn't in your life anymore doesn't mean your life isn't worth living. You know, you gotta just get back out there. Get back on the wagon. Or you know, whatever the metaphor is, you know. Yeah, so uh, this Jeff meant a lot to you, huh? More than words can say in the most beautiful eyes. When I got home from work, he'd listen to me vent, no questions asked. He was a hell of a cuddler. And it sounds like you're still in the grieving stage? Well, honestly, I think I'm still at bargaining. And so, you came here to talk to someone like me. Well, honestly, it seemed like the best course of action. You know, considering I have been to a lot of these events, but this story really takes the cake. I mean, I, your boyfriend broke up with you. Whoa, you decided whoa, whoa. the best way to put yourself out there was, was to go to a seance and meet a handsome ghost to sweep you off. <laughs> no, I, I know that not everything is peachy keen for the living, but aren't there literally billions of people walking around out there that you could try to make out with? Okay, first of all, I didn't come here trying to make out with you. Or any ghost for that matter. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Like, it didn't cross your mind. Listen. I might be dead, but I still have eyes, mister, and yours have been glued to me since the second I walked in here. Okay, but humble much? Secondly, Jeff wasn't my boyfriend, Jeff was my dog. It's been hard to get over him dying, all right? Oh. Oh, wow, I got that all kinds of wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry for your, well, for, for Jeff's passing. It's whatever. Okay then, but I mean, what was with your speed dating questions? I wasn't sure how much time we'd have to develop a rapport, and I wanted to make sure I could trust you. Why? Promise you won't laugh? I mean, you named a dog Jeff, but I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> that was rude, I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> what kind of dog was he? French Bulldog. What? A French Bulldog. Jeff, the French Bulldog. <laughs> he was a gentleman, and I will not have you besmirch his legacy by laughing at his name. That is totally fair. Again, my condolences for Jeff, Jeff the French Bulldog. <laughs> Thank you. So you wanted to speed date me to see if you could trust me? Yes, because... Oh, this is embarrassing, but 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 I wanted to know if 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 all dogs go to heaven. <laughs> oh, you're serious, I mean. <laughs> Uh Yeah, just give me one second. Um, <sighs> okay, I will do this once because you are very cute and more than a little desperate. Are you fair? You think I'm cute? Up, 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 up. <laughs> What is happening? You wanted to know if all dogs go to heaven. Now, I can say for certain that not all dogs do. I, I've seen a couple here in purgatory, and I can only assume that there are some in hell. You know, like the dogs that hurt the cops? That tracks. <laughs> but there is one thing I can do, a way to, to contact a soul which has reached its final destination. I, I just need to get the heavenly frequencies correct. Here, I have the question, but uh, do you know if, um... No! Ashley! Oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ashley, look at you! You've grown! Oh, what are you doing here, young man? Oh, are you getting enough 
to eat. You're getting so tall, honey. I always worried about your lifestyle. I thought it might lead you to dangerous men. But I never thought I had to worry about witchcraft. <laughs> Mrs. Um... You can call me Mrs. Stillman. Uh, Mrs. Stillman, um, I would hardly call myself dangerous. Uh, no, your son and I have only just met. Um, you could be some sort of incubus, set on destroying him with your perfect hair and appealing caboose. Mom! <laughs> what? We're all thinking it. Mom, this is Caleb, and he's not an incubus, I think. <laughs> he's just a nice spirit who has been <coughs> putting up with my nonsense for this evening and was trying to answer a question that I had. Uh, yes, and I, I think the clock is ticking on this oh. long-distance call that we have going on. What so, is it, honey? Um, you know you can talk to me about anything. Geez, this seems so silly now, but oh. Jeff, the Frenchie you got me before you... Yes, sweetie! Oh. Oh, no, 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 hold on, let me just, um... Oh. Is he all right? Is he in heaven with you? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. took something from me. What's that? My heart. snacks or juice? I'm all set, Doc. You do look really good. I feel good, Doc. Better anyway. You know, not so dizzy. Mm. Mostly I'm not sure why I need to be here. 
I mean, all those tests. I didn't know I'd get all this attention. You did the right thing coming in, Terry. Hmm. You were dizzy. You had trouble standing and walking. You had a fall. No, I stumbled. Yeah, we talked about that. We count that as a fall. Plus, there's your age and your heart history. You come in with all that, you're going to get attention. It's what we do. Now, your blood pressure, heart rhythm, all that stuff looks really good. You're pretty sure your heart's okay. And the brain scan, those functional tests, the arm strength and stuff, that looks good too. You got today's date right, added up the numbers, ID the animals in the picture, so no sign of a stroke, and your blood work's pretty much normal too. Really? I almost hate to be taking up so much of your time. Well, you're the one who had a long day. We get paid to be here, but really as best you came in. How'd you get here? You drive yourself? No, I still drive, but neighbor brought me in. I'm getting smarter about that. You know, driving while dizzy, a little smarter anyway. Good choice. Anyway, we're not going to keep you. We don't see any major concern, the heart or brain stuff. That's good. Right. What we think could be an inner ear thing. Here, watch my finger and move just your eyes, not your head. Inner ear. How's that work, Doc? Okay, that looks good. K. You should call me K. Adults and all that. Nah, I don't think so, Doc. You guys got all those scary tools here, you know, the needles, the knives, the tubes, that little hammer thing. I don't think so. I'm going to be real polite. I'm going to call you Doc. All right, I like that. Way better than we usually get. Now, watch my finger by turning your head side to side. Any dizziness? No, oh, I'm fine. I'll tell you, though, that is a nice name, K. It's spelled with an E, too. Yeah, it reminds me of something. Back during COVID time. You must remember COVID, right? It was before you were docked, I bet. Uh, well before. I was maybe eight. We lived in a neighborhood in town. Yeah, you know, we downsized after the kids moved out, but we stayed in town. Anyway, it was that first summer of COVID. No one knew how bad it was going to get. Didn't have any vaccines. And so then the argument started. You know, wearing the masks, closing bars and movies. In churches, you know, it seemed like the biggest arguments were over churches and bars. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, we kids, we didn't know about all that. Not then, anyway. Now, Terry, rock your head left and right a few times. Any dizziness from that? No, I'm good. So, you know, people wanted to blame the government or China or both. They said the NIH was working with China on super viruses. <laughs> maybe by accident, maybe not. So then things got really weird. You know, when they started saying, we're closing the schools, and people thought uh, this was such a violation of their rights. You know, tyranny, they were saying. They started taking guns to state capitals. They were yelling in school board meetings. I mean, look, it was hard on people, but damn. You know, people still talk about that. My parents do. How it got so so crazy-like? Mm. I think we kids turned out all right, though. Mostly. I mean, I'm just one data point, but I turned out okay, I guess. Okay. You guess. You're a dog. <laughs> My parents are still amazed. <laughs> we think about all that stuff with masks and testing, the news about viruses and genomes. Probably what got me started. <laughs> now, Terry, hold your hands out in front of you and relax your fingers. I don't see any trembling. That's good. A little low on caffeine this time of day, Doc. <laughs> I tell you, though, my theory. People felt big, li big parts of their lives had been taken away from them, and in a way, you, you really can't blame them. But the way they reacted to it, you know, imagining all these plots against them, the medical companies, Google, whomever, all controlling events. And, you know, funny thing, not funny funny, but I think some people wanted that to be true. Because, you see, if there was no big conspiracy, then it was just them. They were making their own unhappiness, and they couldn't have that, right? So people got some wild ideas. And, you know, I think they got some kind of excitement out of it, or maybe some kind of relief, because it, it wasn't them to blame. Hmm. That's, uh, that's some concept. Hmm. Stand up for me. Lift your right foot. Good. And your left. Good. So you checking to see if I can lift my feet or if I know my right from my left. 
asked him, hmm, I'll never tell. <laughs> we were kids that summer. Most of our parents were working from home, plus working hard to keep us busy, burn off all that energy. We were outside all the time, running, bikes, games, did arts and crafts, posters. We got a dog. Yeah, I remember when I grew up, it was still kind of baby boom time, and it seemed like everywhere was kids. You could always hear kids just yelling and playing, mostly happy, sometimes, you know, crying or fighting. Later on, though, like after college, where I lived, there weren't so many kids. Somehow I never noticed how that, that sound, you know, the playing and the, the yelling, was gone. I guess we did. We were pretty noisy. Even during COVID time with our, what do we call them, bubbles, I think. We could only hang out with kids our parents knew, something like that. We still made a lot of noise. But it's funny what you say. I, I never thought of the sound being like background to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. One last thing. I want you to raise your head to look up. Then, and really quickly look down. Do that three times pretty fast. Any dizziness? Vision okay? No, I feel good. So, you know, you don't really notice or realize when that sound, you know, the plane, it goes. Yeah, it's just a, a very, very strange thing. You, you aren't really aware of it, so you don't notice when it's gone. Now, later, my wife and I lived where there were kids, and we had kids. And I heard that sound again, and I remembered how much I loved that sound. I liked hearing the kids. You know, it made me think of my childhood, you know, kids everywhere. A nice time must have been, and a nice memory. Yeah, it got even better when it wasn't us raising little buggers anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was just a good time. My wife and I were happy. The other parents seemed happy too, so it was all good. So you were talking COVID time? Yeah, yeah, COVID. You know, a lot of the parents kept their kids more than just busy. They had them making signs for things like uh, immigrants welcome, uh, love is love, uh, black lives matter. You remember that? Mm, sort of, yeah. I remember making uh, happy little things. Pictures of birds, flowers, stars and such, smiley faces and chalk on the pavement. For us kids that summer, it was the dog in pretty colors. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like a lot of people just wanted to reach out. Anyway, my story, you know, it seems like most of my life is stories these days. So this was during COVID time. One day my wife found on our mailbox this small wooden plaque, on maybe two by three inches. On the front, it said, we hope you're happy and safe. And on the back was this bright rainbow in the words, love, K. It's nice. Yeah, you know, we knew a lot of kids in the neighborhood. We never did know that K. My wife put the plaque back in the window next to the mailbox. She thought that K would see it and realize how much we liked what she'd done. But, uh, Happy and safe. I was just right, especially at that point. You know, I probably still have that plaque you know, somewhere on my wife's stuff. It's been a while since, uh, you know, I still haven't been able to make myself go through her stuff. Maybe, maybe, I'll go looking for that plaque. You know, get me started. That's, that's such a sweet story. So, anyway, as I said, it's probably an inner ear thing. Vertigo. You get older and well, there's fluid in these tubes in the inner ear and that fluid can get sticky-like. It doesn't move around the way it should when you move, so you get dizzy. You don't balance too well, you see funny. That was it, Doc. Right, so what you do, you be sure to drink plenty of liquid, water. Got to keep that fluid loose and moving up there. Mm -hmm. Not too much salt, go easy on the alcohol, mm -hmm. and you seem really fit so don't sit around. That fluid has to keep moving, okay? Stay in practice. And that's really it. So you just stay, stay happy and safe. And get back in here if this keeps happening. Happy and safe. Best advice ever. You know, I'm going to call you Kay after all. 
We never get a chance to thank that little girl, Kay. But I will thank you, Kay. Thank you. When I was 15 years old, I felt that I needed to say something important, and I really wanted to be heard. I don't mean like not saying the word God during the Pledge of Allegiance. That did happen, and I was really proud of myself for that, but that one didn't count because I was the only one who heard it. But when I was 15, and my mother was busy being magnificent and beautiful, and my father was, well, whatever my father was. I used my voice. In general, it was difficult to speak in my house because there was always so much movement, and I just moved along with it, figuring that nobody would uh, listen to me, I guess. Dad? Hey, Dad, can I go, please? Leave some of that for the rest of the week, B. You're not going to be there all night, right? Dad. No. No. Where the heck are they? I don't understand this. Dad, has anyone seen my dark brown case? Mom, can you? Jackie, she's talking to you. Jackie? No? <laughs> No answer. Uh, B, Dad is uncomfortable with this. Yep. Has anyone seen any of my paintbrushes? Step forward, paintbrushes, wherever you are. <laughs> Hello? Are you out there, ladies? I already <laughs> said you can't go. Take that crap off your face. What is that? What is what? That red crap. It's just lip gloss, Dad. Try again. It's barely even a color. I can only find the ones with the thinner bellies. Where are all the others? This is insane. Fine, look, I'll take it off. Now, can I go, please? It's disrespectful. Who am I disrespecting, exactly? The school. Who? You disrespect the school. What if she sat in the back? Oh, Cheryl, you're making me crazy. Would you sit down or, or go find my glove? I asked about my glove 15 minutes ago. Did you put it in the bag? I did. I put them. Oh, now why is this box practically empty? See this? <sighs> I've got barely any motion here. I hurt my wrist last night. Why? No glove. Dad. B, the school is a helpful institution. Yeah, it's an institution. Exactly. It's like a fucking, oh, excuse me, Dad, sorry. It's like a prison. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and it breeds total Neanderthal a-holes. Sorry, I'm sorry. School is a place that supports you. You kids get all fired up about one thing that feels wrong, and suddenly you want to be the... The, the frickin' face of the... the justice. The, the face of justice. <laughs> there are real problems in the world. Bigger problems. Pay attention to the real problems of the world. Maybe I left them in the basement. <laughs> Why is my bowling glove in the basement? It's damp down there. My bowling glove can't be in a damp basement. No, no, no. no. My brushes are in the basement. The girls with the fuller bellies. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> bristles. Thick paint brushes, Jackie. The bristles. The bristles are the bellies. The paint sits within their bellies like, like oxygen. Like food. Like Where is my goddamn bowling ball? <laughs> <laughs> Dad, um, my bike is right in the driveway. I can just get on it. No. And... Your glove is in your bag. It's under your ball, Jackie. Look, I do respect the <laughs> Dad. And you know what? So what if we're seen? That's, that's the whole point. We want to be seen. It's only a small protest of kids, Jackie. Let them speak up. More female authors in English class. More vaginas in the classroom. Don't say that word. <laughs> what, vaginas? Vaginas! Stop! <laughs> Dad, I have a vagina. And Mom, this is not exactly about authors with vaginas. I said stop it with that word. It's about that girl and what happened to her. You have no idea what happened to that girl. Okay, okay, now what did I do with the TV guy? It was right here on the coffee table. Right here on the table. And that actress from All My Children was on the cover, Susan, what's her 
face is like she doesn't want me watching her sin on daytime TV. Susan Lucci, Mom? Right, that's it. The one who's been married 11 times. Not in real life. Oh, no, of course not in real life. <laughs> Who could marry that many men in one lifetime? Not me. Not you. <laughs> okay, Jackie. Well, I don't mind your sin, Susie. <laughs> Turn my TV guide, please. Well, look at that. My ass has been sitting on her the whole time. You brought it in here with your coffee and you put it on my chair. Unbelievable. You were the one who was sitting on it, Dad. It's my chair. At me? Don't go anywhere. Uh, what about if we did a little protest of our own tomorrow night? 60 Minutes is doing something on all of Richard III's dead, brutalized wives. <sighs> Maybe we can watch it. Uh, wear red scarves around our necks and our hearts to represent our... Uh, our missing heads? Mom! And, and, and the pain in our hearts for them. Then we can just relax, watch the prices right. You're... Oh, Bob Barker, he, oh, he just loves animals, really? which I've always respected. <laughs> You're thinking of Henry VIII, Mom. <laughs> Henry VIII loved animals? No, no. <laughs> he had all the wives. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Only two of them had missing heads. Oh, right, right, right. right. Uh, Henry VIII had the missing headed wise, and, and Richard III had um, a hunchback. A, and a pronounced chin. Yes. <laughs> My mother was always, always bad at names, despite the fact that she was obsessed with history. And that year, the year she tried to uh, protect us from what was ha happening inside her body. My mother was working on an art exhibit. She made these statues of heads. Well, actually they're called busts, but I always hated that word, busts, <laughs> because I would have to say things like, my mother's bust is too heavy to carry to the car, or I think my mother's bust is beautiful, so kindly stop laughing at my mother's bust and take your fucking Nintendo elsewhere. <laughs> Anyways, um, she, uh, that year, was making sculptures of, of women from the pre-Jane Goodall era. For some reason, my mother compartmentalized history in this way. American history either happened before Jane befriended the chimpanzees or after. <laughs> <laughs> and she would, she would write these phrases and words that were meaningful to the women she portrayed across them. So uh, that time it was either something that Harriet Tubman said, or something that Emily Dickinson wrote, because I could not stop for death. The irony of those words written on one of my mother's busts is not lost on me. Because I could not stop for death. Anyways, uh, that art exhibit was really important to her. I guess she thought she was helping people speak their minds. Don't forget, I'm showing my busts at the rec center tonight. Oh, uh, not at my rec center, please. Yeah, I told you, there's a thing, a fundraiser for the women's clinic. You're coming, right, Jackie? Oh, ha! Ah, there you are, my lovely fat lady. <laughs> well, this lady won't be ready in time. We'll get you to the next one. A fundraiser for what? I told you. For the women's center, women who need help. From your bus? Yeah. My art teacher invited me to bring my work, and she said a lot of art people will be there. I told you all this. Oh, I need to start loading your truck. You need to what? My tournament's tonight, the finals. I'm leaving in like a minute. But I gotta transport 12 of my pieces. No, 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 14. Uh, Joan of Arc and Eliza are upstairs. Eliza? Do a little. <laughs> <laughs> like the completely not real character from My Fair Lady? No. She could be real. She's a woman. I mean, she's symbolic. She's a woman with a fake Cockney accent. I'm a good girl, I am. Jackie. <sighs> Schedule's changed. Tonight's the finals. I need the truck. I need to leave in like a minute. And didn't that Henry guy try to change, like, everything about Eliza Doolittle? The way she talked, the way she dressed, everything? And, and she did. She completely changed for him. See, this is just one of the many reasons that we are tired. We are tired? Who the hell is we? You're 15 years old. When the school stands by and does nothing. And also, by the way, about Eliza Doolittle, uh -huh. she did stand up for herself in the end. And she taught Henry Higgins how to be civil and how to love. 
And that's what we should be doing for each other. Right, Jackie? Am I crazy? You said you would help. I, I can't get there by myself. I can't. I, I have to be there soon. Can't. I'll be late for warm-ups. Didn't I? I don't know. You were saying something about the school? Oh, yeah. Dad, um, the school is not doing anything about this, and it's important for me to go. Cheryl, art people are not going to an art show at the rec center. And if it's a fundraiser, how picky were they? What is that supposed to mean? Well, I mean, they're not inviting real artists. Dad! All I'm saying is it's not going to be difficult for someone to decide whether to give all their money to a, a Rembrandt or one of your ceramic heads. She said... Julia specifically, specifically said to me, she said, she said my pieces were, she used this word, beautiful. She said they were beautiful. That's nice. Doesn't that count for something? That's nice. Dad, isn't that nice? Jackie, please, it's just up the road. I gotta be there in like 30 minutes. It's like five minutes out of your way. Please, you said you would help. My childhood memories seem to revolve around my father's bowling team, the bull-legged men, I kid you not, and my mother's struggle to live up to them. He even had this special ball that nobody was allowed to touch. Actually, nobody was even allowed to look at it for fear that we would touch it. He would take it into the garage and polish it, and we would wait for him so that we could finally start eating dinner. Even when my mom was really sick, that ball was cared for and shined. It was his lucky ball, and he refused to bowl without it. I hated that fucking ball. Dad, you know that that girl at school, that could have been me. You don't know what happened. I think that no I, one knows anything. Yes, that girl does know something. I sit next to her in my biology class, and I can tell that something happened. B, sit down. That girl, Danielle Thompson, I saw her coming out of Quick Mart up on Brentwood at 11 o'clock the other night. 11 o'clock. Now, let me tell you that when a young lady is out and about at Look, 11... Look, it's happening, Dad. Mr. McCabe, my study hall teacher, excused some kid for coming in 20 minutes late the other day. Huge grin on his stupid face. He didn't have a pass. He said that his locker got stuck. But I know this kid, Dad. I know exactly where he was. And I'm sure that there was a girl coming from the book room I'm sorry, crying in the restroom, too. Because, because these kids are animals. Dad, I have seen them. And what do you think happened to that guy? Nothing. This is not your teacher's I'm fault. I'm just saying that these things are happening and nobody is doing anything about it. Frank Boscarino told me that your principal sat that girl, I am talking to you, said that your principal sat that girl down, listened to her story, and her story did not add up. He said, Frank said, She was that probably she... scared, Dad. If I were you, I would stop. Right now. Beatrice, please, stop. Jackie. Jack. Can't she just go and support What? She could just take her bike for a little bit. Thank you. Nobody will see her. Beatrice, freeze. Dad, you can't lose your job. The girls are waiting for me. I have to go. I am telling you for the last time, you know nothing. And I don't want to hear you ask me again. I have to go change my shirt. This is not no, fair! No, 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 no. Mommy, listen to me. 
I know. I do know what happens. I've seen it. I mean, I've heard it. There's these shelves that nobody can see past, and, and there's these stacks of books from the 1970s blocking anyone's view or something I've heard. And, um, I know what happens in that room. It's true. Dad. Dad. I have to go to this, okay? I know what happens in that room and I have to go. Daddy said no. I can't just sit in my room and do nothing. That girl, he must have been blind not to have seen it. She was scared, Mom. She had a bruised lip and... And I have to go to Jesse, this. please. Beatrice? Hmm. Upstairs. No. Right now. But I... Mom! Now! B, wait. Leave her alone. I stood on the third step of the staircase to my bedroom, and I watched my parents. I didn't dare say anything. I just observed them. The exhibit is just, it's just up the road. I really think I need someone important to look at them, to see them, because they're important, Jackie, to me. If I can just get them there, I can get them. I don't understand why she can't join her friends. It's important to her. Don't worry. Frank is not going to associate you with this. I'm sorry. But if I were that girl's mother... You I are would... not her mother. She is not going to accuse some... She will not join stupid teenagers who don't know what they're talking about. That is enough. Maybe they know exactly what they're talking about. Maybe that girl is really scared. Maybe she, I don't know, her, her bristles are thin and she can't stand up for herself. I cannot even only... look at you when you say stupid shit like that. Jackie, please. I really think I need someone in, important to look at them. Please, can't you just help me? You don't even have to do anything. I can, I can ask Regina, and she can, uh, she can meet me there and, and set them up. I, I, it'll only take me a second. Just a few, please. And I'll grab your back. Her bristles are thin. Do you even hear the stupid shit you say? Oh, God! Oh! Oh! Regina, it's Shirley. <laughs> yeah, I have a problem. <laughs> Are you able to pick me up? Oh, uh, no, it's okay. 
I can know. I can figure something out. Yeah, uh, you know, um, I'm not feeling very well. Oh, well, it's you know, I'll be okay. <laughs> uh, I just think it's best if I don't come anyway. Okay. Have fun. Bye. that ever happened to you? No, Mom. No. Are you telling me the truth? Mom, you should come with us. Do you want to come with us? No. Daddy would have a heart attack. Well, no, no, baby, you go. Be really angry no matter what. Um, Mommy? Hey, hey, are you okay? Yeah. You know, I'll uh, do you, you have your bike, right? Yeah. Ooh, hey. I should do a bust of that Anthony woman. No. Uh, Anthony, see, saw, shit. Uh, see, see. Susan B. Anthony? Yes! Seriously? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's when my mom came up with her war cry piece. Susan B. Anthony's head. All 15 pounds of her. With these words in red. Organize, agitate, educate must be our war cry, written across her face. A year later, I carried that beautiful piece up to the fourth floor of cancer ward, and I, I set it on the windowsill. She was fierce. Mom, um, Dad hasn't left yet, right? Not yet. Okay, um, I could take I could take one of your pieces for you, let her ride in my bike basket. Do you have Amelia Earhart? Oh, that's okay, sweet. Okay. I'm gonna go make sure Dad's bag is packed. Okay. I'm gonna go. Is that all right? It's okay. 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 I left that night and I took my bike and I carried a sign and cried a war cry of my own for Daniel Thompson and for my mom. We didn't talk about what happened at my school again after that. We were just like quiet. But I remembered. And as for the bull-legged men, <laughs> I told my mother I would never tell a single person about this, but here we are. I just wish I could have seen the look on my father's face when he opened his bowling bag at the finals to see Eliza Doolittle's face staring straight back at him. <laughs> I even helped my mother carry that British bus down from the attic and put it in the bag. I'm a good girl, I am. <laughs>
not taking any chances. There's no sense sparing Candyland's feelings. They can obviously handle the truth. I'm not that. I'll fight back if I'm not prepared. Just tell them the nightmare is on her way to devour us all. And resistance is futile. It's not futile. It's no, the nightmare isn't coming. How can you be so sure? Yeah, I'm so sure. Because he isn't real. He isn't real? No, he isn't real. Then, then why do I have bad dreams sometimes? Well, did I have something to deserve it? Am I bad? <laughs> Shot put, what are we even doing up there? Just wondering if a fall from this height would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> No! <laughs> Still here. What up, Homer? <laughs> Don't joke like that. Shut up, you dumb baby. I'm fine. I wish you wouldn't call them names like that. Well, I wish you wouldn't sleep scream. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry I woke you. Oh, that's okay. I forgive you. Thank you, Candyland, for accepting my apology. Shot put. Whatever. Great. Now let's get back to bed. I feel like what not was your dream about? <laughs> oh yeah, Lucky should definitely tell us what scared them so much they nearly pissed themselves. <laughs> I did not piss myself. Nearly pissed yourself. There's a big difference there. Lucky, if you don't tell us, you risk it happening again. If you share your bad dreams, they get a little less bad. <laughs> they got a point. Okay, but. You can't laugh. Of course we wouldn't. Just spill it. Okay, fine. So I... Oh, shit! Go! Okay, 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 okay. I'll just do one. All right, all right, all right. All right, yes, 
loved me. I was the best horse. I am the best horse. But because I looked a certain way, those stupid men took me off the carousel and dumped me here in this warehouse where nobody would ever see me again. Shaw put, I didn't know you were actually on the carousel. I thought you were a spare like us. It doesn't matter. What matters is those teenagers are 1,000% trouble and they're definitely coming back here. We need to do something about no! it. What do you mean? No! They're gonna hurt you! They won't! Candyland, I think we need to listen to Shot Put. What, oh, gee? We don't know their intentions. We need to be cautious. Could you even hear what they were saying about me? They're different this time. I know it. You need to stop. No! I can feel their warmth. I can still feel their warmth. See? I don't feel anything. You have to. You have to feel something. Well, I'm sorry, but I just don't. <laughs> They said they liked us. Candyland, please. Let's just I it bet and get back to bed. They could get us out of here! Stop now! <laughs> they knew we were here! People know we are here! There are people out there that can help us! Yes, yes, they know, but they're not gonna Shut help us! Why? <laughs> Why? Because all humans do is ruin. Things. What part of that don't you get? They created us and we bring the joy. How did that ruin anything? They create, they destroy, and the cycle continues. We're carousel horses. You should know what a circle is. <laughs> well, then why weren't we destroyed? Well, it's because we were the forgotten ones. What? Candyland. It is so much better to be forgotten and left alone than to be remembered and used, abused, torn up, and torn down, and then thrown away. I would rather live safe in obscurity than risk myself out there. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> well, it means, Shotput, that we should be grateful that we are here and alive and in working order. Do you want to know what happened to the rest of us? 
Because that carousel we were supposed to be on sure isn't in working order anymore. You're insane. Why? Then what is the purpose of our life? There was one thing I was good at, one thing I loved doing with all my heart, one thing I was literally created for, and it's been taken away from me. But we're alive. We're surviving. There's a difference. I have an idea. What? What? I've been working on this for a while. I think you're both going to like it. <sighs> oh!
a really heavy sleeper. So I, I play all the time. <laughs> it's usually that, that final note that wakes you up. So that was why I had my nightmare? Oh my gosh, your nightmare. I'm so sorry, I forgot. Oh yeah, what's what was you so bad? God, it's stupid. Oh, spill the beans. Okay. I had a dream that I was stuck in a loop and I didn't have a way to break out. I was frozen in place and I couldn't move and no one seemed to notice or care. Earlier, you said you didn't want to be torn down and torn up and you'd rather sit in this warehouse for the rest of forever. Is that still what you want? They were so warm. <laughs> I know, right? They <laughs> really were warm. And they seemed so kind. <laughs> so they said they were coming back here. I guess we wait. I guess we wait. This is happening suddenly. How can we be sure they won't forget about us, too? I, they seemed light years away from achieving anything. You know, they were kind of high, too. That does make me a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I just know. I think... They want to break the cycle just as much as we do, and I think they have more than enough power to do it. I think we're going to be lucky this time. Oh, well, I'm lucky. I just don't know about you two. <laughs> Shut your stupid face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for this next generation to take over. Now all we have to do is wait. <laughs> Sure. 
sure this space is safe and ready. So, let's begin. I want to start by introducing you all to my cohort of trusty compatriots. Folks, it would not be a special night without this very special night. Give it up. Next agenda item, which is 
picking the best birthday song for Tim. <laughs> now, yeah, Chris will love this part. Now, we can stick with the classic, happy birthday to you. Boo! <laughs> we know how Chris feels about that. For me personally, Boring. you know, I like to sometimes open it up, pick something a little more special to Tim. So, it could be anything. Anything. It could be anything. Your favorite song. Stranger walked in to apologize and he says, Hi, my name is Tim. Okay, we did. <laughs> and I mean, for what? So that, surprise, Inc. can keep making record profits, cheap out on the streamers, and refuse to pay their employees a living wage? No, it's bullshit, Crystal. I mean, <clears throat> how many roommates do you have? What? How many roommates do you need well, to I have to afford to live in this city? I can afford to pay your rent, which has probably gone up, what, 100 bucks a month in the last year? And I mean, that doesn't even include heat or electric or water. You know what? I am sick of this. It's time that we take matters into our own hands. I bet that most of the people here aren't even in to surprise me. What? Anyway. How about this? No, 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 no. Let's vote. All those in favor of continuing to surprise him, oh, please oh, raise your hand. And all those in favor of getting the hell out of here, raise your hands. Woo! Let's see some hands, folks. Put them up. Be honest. Let's go. Leave, 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 leave. I don't know what the hell is going on here, and we are going to talk about that later. But we have exactly one minute to get back on track before Tim gets... 
gets here and you are not ruining this party for me, Prince! Oh no, you are not giving the orders anymore, Sam. The workers are seizing the means of production. Now you have a choice, Sam. I'll have you know that while you were gone, we all took a vote, and a whopping 99% of the folks who got here today said that they do not want to go ahead with this charade, this so called oh, surprise. Because well, it's surprise? A win, it doesn't matter what they want. Because we hear surprise. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, and the contractual uh, obligation to deliver the best surprise. Why do you think it's fair that we only get paid a measly $11 an hour plus tips? No, I know how much this company charges for parties. I demand to see some of that money in my pocket. Do you think this is a living thing? Do you think this is a living thing? Original 
hiding places. Uh, I am not playing around anymore, Sam. I mean, look, look here. Okay, uh, and here. It's a lot of I mean, the main play right to any of you. <laughs> None of you are here for Tim's birthday at all. None of you have ever even met Tim because there, there is, is no, no Tim. Tim. <laughs> no, there is. There is. It's the whole reason that we're here to Some celebrate. of you saw this coming. Some of you knew there was no Tim because you read the program. <laughs> what? You see, Sir Blake Slot is none other than Nate Stevenson. Nate Stevenson is a fantastic working actor. Oh, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> Look, uh, here, that is you. <laughs> Catherine Buxton. No! I'm not Catherine Buxton! I'm Sam! <laughs> no, 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 Catherine Buxton is a fantastic actor and human. No! I'm not Catherine Buxton! <laughs> Five, four, three, two. 